Phil, we talk about everything going on in our world, your world, and the world around us from a Gen Z perspective, and also talk to other interesting, cool, influential Gen Zs doing fun things, which is exactly yes. what we're doing today. I'm excited. Um, this has been a long-awaited interview. We yes. like <laughs> we interviewed somebody else, and we teased that we were going to interview. Um, we interviewed Nina. Actually, I don't know why I'm trying to hide it. You guys are just <laughs> saving the title. Um, <laughs> but we interviewed Nina, and mm. we teased that we were going to interview Jordan. That was a couple of months ago. Well, um, literally, people we, were mad. I actually, we actually like reached out to contact both Nina and Jordan at the same time, mm -hmm. and you'll find out in this interview why we didn't hear back from Jordan until somewhat recently. But even now, we've been back mm -hmm. and forth trying to find a time to do this. The people have been begging us; they've been pounding we it out, always saying, comments. "Where is the interview that you guys <laughs> promised with this person?" We got called out a little bit. Oh yeah, not a little bit, a lot. People are like, it's been three months. Where is <laughs> we, it? We it's been caught. this long. <laughs> they were starting to say, did you guys just say this wasn't coming for the clout? Like, is this a real interview? Imagine but if we were, we, that would be rude. No. We locked we're them serving. down. We secured this interview. So today we're going to be talking to, I think, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you'll have the information to correct me, but I think this might be like the first interview Jordan has done. We're of course, I think it is. Yes. Like, so I actually think it is. For anyone that's not like, hasn't been one of the people pounding at our doors, we're going to be speaking to Jordan, who is has been a huge figure in social media this year, mostly because of a video which exploded January, December, December, January. Seven high schools decide who wins $1,000. I'm going to be hella mean. I'm going to be so mean. Oh. Whoa. Okay. Who's the leader here? Nina. I feel like it's the three of us. Nina. Yeah. Nina. 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 I just want to play like rock, paper, scissors together. I'm chilling. So how's your girlfriend? <laughs> oh, come on, dog. And this particular person, Jordan, became such a notable a villain figure. Character. She was the she villain. She became the villain character, yeah. For and basically for being outspoken, so much memes have come from this moment. Yeah. She was young. Um, I think she was around like 14 at that eight at that point yes. the video was filmed yeah it was it was a huge thing and like very controversial and even i can't wait for you guys to hear more about it from jordan's perspective but if you want to go listen to nina's perspective we've got that for you too we'll also chuck the video in like the, the description or show notes so if you want a bit more context for what we're about to discuss but i think even if you weren't around haven't seen all the stuff this is just like a very interesting scenario mm. in terms of internet culture hate culture mm. just like the ability to kind of put people on such like not even pedestals in this case because it wasn't a positive pedestal mm. stool but it's like developed and it's just very they interesting they put her on blast for like i think it was i don't know how long the video 15 minutes or something they put her on blast for 15 minutes of her personality of what it was back then and as you guys know if you listen to Nita it was very edited you'll hear more about the editing in this video but I think we should just get into it let's go to Jordan all right guys we are back and we are joined by the iconic potentially the most memed person for good or bad of 2021 Jordan mm. Jordan how are you doing I'm okay I'm better now <laughs> <laughs> that's all we time. like to hear had some time to process oh yeah mm. yes. i would I, th I think i'd need years honestly with the amount of like how it blew up i would be needing to go into hibernation for probably until i was 50 so <laughs> you're doing good <laughs> it wasn't even right away either it was like a year and a half later yeah, yeah. which and so I think, was it unexpected for you Oh, yeah. I woke up one morning and just had like a million Instagram notifications. And I was oh, like, no. what? <laughs> <laughs> that old video I filmed like And then two like, years our ago? group chat was blowing up too. Everyone was like, what happened? And I'm like, I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. No, but we always okay. like to start off the interview the conversation with what does a day in the life of Jordan look like? Like what day to day, what does your day consist of? Um, I usually wake up, eat breakfast. Sometimes I wake up, sometimes I don't. <laughs> um, eat breakfast. I usually go for a walk with my dog, Arlo. Um, I have a dog called Arlo. Just so that's just weird things. <laughs> <laughs> and I usually watch a couple of TV shows, hang out with my mom, go to school, of course, when there is school. Um, 
crazy times. Um, <laughs> mm. um, go to school, hang out with my friends, come back home, take a nap because I need my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Eat more snacks and then go to bed. I don't know. It's pretty normal. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it sounds pretty good to me. Honestly, those naps, absolutely love them. It sounds like a nice day. Highlight of my day. Yeah. <laughs> so you're still as high school as you were in the video. You were 14 when you filmed the video. Is that right? I was actually, I just turned 15 when we filmed. Oh, okay. So now you'd be like 17, 18? 16. Oh, well. Oh, okay. what? So it was still oh, wait, no, somewhat I was, recent. I was 14, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was to, I was like, oh my God, time no, is I'm like <laughs> warping. Okay, I feel creepy because no, I'm, I'm like, about damn, to I know you more than yourself. No, I was about to turn 17. That was my own mix up. But yeah, I was 14. Oh, oh right. 17. Okay, that's it. It's been like a couple of years, as you said. Yeah. You're still being hyped up. People know you. People are still wanting to hear from you, talk to you. But what actually made you want to, well, obviously the money, but <laughs> what made you want to go on the cut video itself? Like what prompted yeah. you? Well, mm. I was a big fan of cut. Um, mm. And I knew their offices were in Seattle and everything. I wouldn't per se that I wanted to be an influencer, but I guess I wanted to just be like, oh, I'm in a YouTube video or like, yeah, you know, yeah. Applications or resume app, like, you know, the stuff like that. I just thought it'd be a fun experience to have. You know, I could tell my kids about or my grandkids. Like, hey, you could definitely know. tell them now. <laughs> yeah. You got more than you bargained for in terms of a memorable experience. The story went a lot further than I thought it was going to be. Like, I just stop. I signed up on email for their yeah i signed up for their emails on their website and then saw this opportunity and said why not mm. now there's a lot of reasons why not but <laughs> <laughs> how is the obviously it's been very like you said it just kept going being a whole experience but in terms of like the actual day in which you were there you're recording the video what was that experience like for you well i'm off came from school we drove over um we all met each other for literally three minutes mm. and i said okay we're filming wow <laughs> When we started filming um it was weird like i feel like people need to remember this was two and a half hours of filming whoa yeah okay. see even when we when we talked to nina like i didn't we didn't get that information either so that's wild yeah, so was, we went over we were supposed to only be two hours but we went over wow. up to 15 minutes like of course it Mm, which yeah we'll get into a little bit later but of course things aren't as they seem <laughs> what was your kind of first impressions or interactions or reactions to the other uh young people teens? of course me and nina had our troubles i don't even remember <laughs> why because of course it's been like two years now yeah yeah maybe i just didn't like her vibe i don't know but sometimes uh, personalities just clash like that's yeah i think that was part that's of it, it. Well. me and heather got along um really good from the beginning i kind of made a mistake because NJ, there was someone's like, I thought his boyfriend was in the waiting room with him, and that was someone else's uh, brother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of messed up there. Geneva, I really liked her. Got a good impression from her. Uh, me and Nina, obviously, didn't get along. <laughs> EJ was really quiet, but, you know, I liked him. I'm always friends with the introverts, so. Mm. Yeah, right. And then, Khaled was quiet as well, but he seemed nervous, like very nervous. But I was yeah, nervous. yeah. He seemed very like nervous to go into it. Are you, would you describe yourself as an introvert? No. Oh. Have you watched the video? <laughs> <laughs> um, and even like coming on this right now, I think if you were an introvert, you'd have a little bit more reservations. You know. I think, um, <laughs> When I first meet people and first go into situations, I'm a little like, and a little like laid back and like a little more introverted. But as soon as you say like two words to me, then I'm my extrovert comes out immediately. Mm, yeah, I feel yeah. that. Yeah, because you, you got you got to scope out the area. You know, you have to feel like what people are, you know, oh, what yeah. vibes we're getting, and then you can be yourself. Like, yeah, I I completely get that. Um, um was more- there any expectations like after the video like mm. we we like did you well you said you went in there being like I'm going to be on a video but did you have any like idea of how it was going to be edited or like idea of like what the after reaction was going to be mm. and were you disappointed when obviously there wasn't as much traction like straight after no I kind of expected it not to get that much traction because the other ones that they did like that didn't get much I just thought it was a cool thing to show my friends and my family and all of that. Um, I They edited it in a way that I, a couple ways, didn't think they were going to edit it. 
But I mean, they did, and that's their final choice. So that's their decision ultimately. But it was weird. We like we texted in the group chat. Oh, it's out! It's out! Um, and then no, I don't know. Yeah. Then. Was, oh, twenty thousand people have seen it. That's a lot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought well, that I was. was gonna... <laughs> well, I mean, no. if you go from zero to like twenty thousand, suddenly that's and you haven't. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're yet to experience that like ten million or whatever it's at now. Of course, that's going to seem crazy. It seemed insane then. And it only got even crazier. So <laughs> yeah. So what was so it was 2019 that you recorded it. The end of 2019. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And then it wasn't until what the end of 2020, start of 2021, that it yeah started to go through a second round of traction. Not even like a, you couldn't even call it a second round. It just like blew up. Like I I remember seeing it one day, and then the next that was all I saw. Well, like on everything. Do you know what okay. happened there? In terms of like kicking it off again? No, I heard it was like a TikTok video, but I I don't know for sure. I just know one day I went to sleep, and the next I woke up with like thirty thousand followers, and I was very confused. And then how did you like work it out? Did you go into social media and start seeing all these well, videos I, of yourself? I also saw that um our group chat with all of us there was like seven notifications in our group chat, so I was like, what is going on? And so I looked, and they're all like, have you seen this? And I was like, oh my gosh. Oh shit! I was mean. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! But I think the main thing is you—you you said it. Like you—you you, you said it at the end that like oh, there's like things that like I regret saying, which I think people still don't understand. Like yeah, legit. yeah. It's never listen to the end because oh, true. <laughs> so many people like haven't said that. Um, there's this one YouTuber who made a video on it and like was like, hey. She said she did wrong, and I was like, exactly. But <laughs> yeah. at the end of the video, no one watches it. Um, yeah, and I guess you were fourteen on TikTok, yeah. like, it- like <laughs> getting snippets of you saying specific things, and that's what people are seeing rather than the whole video. Where like it's very kind of wise and introspective of you to sit there and be like, actually, this did let out a bit of rage that I didn't expect from within me, yeah. and like I'm. I've never kind of- had that much rage, so I'm not sure where that came from. Was the money? Because I feel like we would all, if we're, especially when you're like young, well, like not young, but like fourteen. I feel like I was still young back then. Um, that is a lot of money. Like the, the possibilities yeah. with a thousand dollars, it's like you could do anything. So it brings, it's gonna bring out whatever it's gonna bring out. <laughs> you can't stop it. Yeah, for sure. And you're probably um, also in my- this big studio with all these cameras, and you're like, this is going on YouTube, which is a new experience. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. that and also my family is very, very competitive. We're just okay. <laughs> I'm actually talking to competitive people in my family, which is saying something. Um, <laughs> I mean, my grandma throws chairs at Thanksgiving. I mean, it goes nuts. <laughs> so they watch the video and they're like, Jordan, you didn't fight hard enough. <laughs> Basically, my grandma was like, that's all you got? And I was like, what? <laughs> they're like, look, uh-huh. you did a, didn't try hard enough. Um, next time, this is your game plan. My grandma was like, <laughs> I was like, I wasn't going to fight her, especially not on <laughs> You didn't even flip the bench. You had that <laughs> whole couch you could have thrown at her. Um, yeah, so oh God. <laughs> you and Nina, just breaking it down a bit more, had a very interesting relationship. Obviously, there was a bit of tension on the set. And then afterwards, you guys started getting like shipped a lot in videos. Uh, people being, what was, what, are you, what was your ship name again? Gina? Gina? Yes, Gina. What was your reaction to that whole relationship? It was so weird. People took this mm-hmm. like this hate that we had towards each other and made it some like <laughs> they flipped it, <laughs> made it some like forbidden love, and me and it was just like what? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't even think she's kind of gay. Yeah, no, she has a boy. Oh, maybe she's bi, but she has a boyfriend. Um, yeah. Bad. Um, well, uh, yeah, had back back <laughs> we two years, so yeah. I don't want to put that out in the universe. <laughs> but no it was so weird because like first when we were like looking to talk to Nina I was like going through everything and you know you saw the like discord and like the hate and stuff like I say hate but it was hate the hate and stuff and then suddenly they sent me this video and it popped up this whole new world of shipping and the edits that people have put in like the time I was so I bewildered time and dedication. I appreciate mm. that <laughs> but I just don't understand where th- they got that from or like <laughs> how like I'm just so confused like where that came from mm. it also makes me like think about you know how like celebrities are shipped a lot and stuff like that 
and they're on such like a a bigger world kind of scene how like and I sometimes ship celebrities I'm like yeah they're definitely they're definitely in love (laughs) and then looking at like this scenario I'm like oh okay we really need to take back as like step back as a society because this is wrong and so impactful yeah this experience definitely made me um realize like what celebrities and influencers and that kind of thing go through and we have Mm. more respect for them and you know more grace for the mistakes they make exactly it's caught on camera and society is just going to judge them for every tiny thing yes yeah yes so let's get into like the hate aspect because there was like such like a surprisingly amount of just like negative like direct just hate towards you how did you respond to that hate um I got in a really dark place. I'm not gonna lie. Um, mm. With all the hate, I mean, I was getting death threats and pictures of my house. And oh my god, uh, I don't even know how they got them. And I was getting like insane things. And I really just stopped looking at my DMs and stopped looking at everything. Um, wow, it was really hard. I don't even know how I made it through it. I'm gonna be honest. Mm. Uh, my mom was a really big supporter for me. For sure. That's um, so good to have. She's like, I love her so much. She's my number one um, person in this whole wide world. She knew that wasn't me. And so, you know, she would always be next to me, holding the tissues or holding me or, you know, making sure that I was okay and going through it, yelling at me if she caught me on Instagram. <laughs> you know, <all> <laughs> So I'm very thankful for her. I think she she and my dog are like the biggest reasons how I got through this. Yeah. My dog's also very in touch with emotions. So anytime I cry, he runs and like starts licking my tears. Oh. Yeah, he's the oh. sweetest. Oh. Animals uh, are like honestly the best. I Yeah. I agree. So I think they helped me get through it a lot. And I kind of have an obsession with stuffed animals. So mm. it also helped me. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite stuffed animal, like what animals are soft? Okay, good choice, good choice. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. Like mm. I, we get like a cut, like we don't get anything to that magnitude, but I get like one or two because people don't like when I talk and I'm like, oh my God, my heart, like it like hurts. Exactly. So this was the whole I just, after you. yeah, I could not fathom. It's, it's awful. That I was the person that like didn't care what other people thought and yeah. like, I'm this confident badass. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Like I used to think that about myself. And then this was really like, no, I care what people think. Mm. I am one of the people. Cause I really I think that's human though. You know? In a way, yeah, it is. But in a way, I don't really care. But in a way, I also do. And I think, you know, like you said, it's human and everyone does. Especially at that magnitude. Like, of course, like if you're gonna have all of these people, like maybe if it was like four, you could be like, oh, I don't care. But like when it's the whole internet, hundreds like siding, yeah, siding against you basically, like it's gonna hit somewhere. <laughs> it's gonna yeah. find somewhere to hit. Um and I guess there's probably yeah. a point you're like, Yes, I'm confident, I know who I am, but then it's like another thousand of them comes in. It's like, okay, well, there's only so much of this I can take before. I guess it would just start kind of affecting personally getting to you in terms of, well, maybe I am what they're saying I am. Of course. And I have anxiety. So mm. that makes perfect. that like a lot. Yeah, perfect combination. <laughs> um, anxiety and depression and all that stuff. So that didn't make that any easier. Mm-hmm. So how did you, I guess, besides leaning on other people for support, um, cope with, cope with all the attention but specifically the hate and then get to the point where you are now and actually what I what is your point now um I just stopped basically all Instagram um stopped posting stopped storying uh made my TikTok private just basically disappeared became a ghost and I've gotten to the point where now where I can at least look at Instagram but I don't look at my comments and my DMs I don't look at any of that because I can't or you know I feel like yeah physically that to myself and so it got to the point where I wasn't on Instagram ever. I deleted the app. Um, but I left that page there so that people could get their hate out without actually affecting me. <laughs> they wouldn't no, like, like that's that. really yeah. big. Because, like, they're going to put it somewhere. That's the thing. Like, even if you would have deleted your page, they would have found some way to message you. They would have my found dad, some way. Because um, my dad was like, you need to take down your Instagram page right now. And I was like, 
they're just going to find me somewhere else. Like, it's not going to go away. I'm just going to not go on Instagram and they're, they can just get out their hate and think that I see it, but I'm not actually seeing any of it. That's so smart and intelligent. I wouldn't even need thought of that. So. <laughs> and, I mean, they need to get somewhere. Yeah, and that, I guess that uh, response is so mature of you because I know lots of people would be, like, very tempted to kind of capitalize off that success and that attention oh, was. was there any part of you that was like this is my moment like this is I need to be on it so I can keep like getting more followers like make this my thing in a way yes but I didn't want um the influencer or like the influence to be off negative faces mm. or be off of hate or any of that and I already couldn't deal with the hate so doing you know more of that and like building on it it wouldn't be good for my mental health or mm-hmm. any of that honestly but you know little Jordan and even me now is like you know influencer so fun I want to be one but no I don't <laughs> <laughs> were you able to enjoy any of the positive aspects of it because there was like what I mean there was all these like big people like looking at you People did, there was a lot of love for you. And especially over time, I think it started to switch a bit. Were you able to kind of enjoy that at all? Or was it all just like, I can't even take in any of this? Not really. Um, because I never understood why people were like, I love you. You saw the worst 15 minutes <laughs> of me. You hate me and I was a bitch. Like, well, you love me and I was a bitch. Like, what? <laughs> like, I never understood why people loved me like I even hated me in that video so it was weird when people said they love me because like what did you love about me mm-hmm. like, what? and that's not a true representation of you so it's like if you're saying you love me like that it's like but mm. it's not even it's myself weird. so you're loving this completely different person mm. I was gonna say um with the Instagram and the hate do you feel like and this might be like a stupid question but because like being a young person in this generation our life revolves around social media. Like we can't not have it revolve around that. Do you feel like you've been robbed a little bit of like your experience to just be online and to be interacting with people online? Like even if you didn't have a status? Yeah, because there's been times when I've wanted to post things where I'm like, oh, I can't. Or like <laughs> Instagram, I know all of them are going to find it. There's mm-hmm. thousands of eyes watching. Yeah, yeah. so... There's definitely been times when I'm like, oh, wow, I'm doing something really fun. I want to post this. Oh, I can't. Oh, I want to be, mm. oh. Uh, oh. Like, there's just lots of times where I'm like, oh, I want to post something. As you see my page, I don't post very often like, at all. But there has been times when I've wanted to post. I'm like, oh, I can't. That sucks. Yeah. Um, or like when I friends want to follow me at school, I have to explain why I have 50,000 followers. And why I have, like, <laughs> like wow. Well. I'm like, um. Well, you <laughs> see, <laughs> just pulls up the video. This is this is what's happened. <laughs> How did your family yeah. and school and friends and people in real life react to the whole situation? They either blamed it on the editing, which I personally only blame mm. like, the editing for, or um, they know that's not me personally, mm-hmm. and they know that was just you know me messing up and not who I am. Uh, my best friend she was super supportive of me and was like this is bullshit like no yeah um, and also like if I literally like watched back the video like there's some bits that like okay you're a bit like mean or whatever but like overall it's not like you were calling Nina awful things and like abusing her verbally you know what I mean like yeah. the uh, the reaction to like what you actually they made it like, like acted yeah <laughs> like literally like kind of an arm or like leg and I'm like okay guys <laughs> like let's yeah. actually focus it on something else yeah they made it seem like I ruined her life mm. like I took away her puppy <laughs> <laughs> no it's a good point because even you saying that's not me like I don't want to be associated with that like truthfully you kind of you got a bit loud and opinionated yeah. but you weren't cruel or like a horrible person mm. even so, I mean, I, and you made you made this episode entertaining. Like, we actually should be <laughs> like, honestly, what would the episode be without it? To be honest, I get texts all the time like, "Hey, thanks for making us influencers." From like my cat, from the people who are also in the video, or like, "Thanks for yeah. carrying the whole video." <laughs> 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 like, without me, or me. I don't know. Bad guy, and I'm guess I'm it, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it though. There is this like whole like 
I don't want to say algorithm, but there's like an algorithm to all entertainment where there has to be a good person and there has to be a bad person. And like, no matter what level of that, the bad person is, even if they make like a tiny little, like minuscule mistake, they, that's what their deem does for the whole time. So yeah, but it's, it was, it was different in my opinion, because you admitted to it and you like kind of righted your wrongs in the span of the like two hours, as you said, you realized how you acted and changed that. So it's very odd. Very I odd. Tried my best, but um, I guess as people started doing more hate, I started like doubting, like, oh, did I actually say that in a video? I actually had to rewatch it a couple of times to make sure I did say that. Because you were like, you make no remorse. You don't do anything. I was like, I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, <laughs> but it still makes me feel, you know, like a bad person. Mm. Um, which... In that moment, I was. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm not going to say I wasn't mean and I wasn't hateful and I wasn't loud and annoying because I was. You were also 14. (laughs) That's just what we're like. (laughs) What about, um, so like you rock up to school in the height of it. Do you go to just like a normal school where there's lots of people around? Uh, Not really. Um, So I was actually out of school at that moment because I was right. transitioning to a new school um, when it got popular, but then COVID happened. Oh, so of course. I really wasn't in school um, when actually any of this, but I did have a couple of people reach out and were like, hey, are you okay? Um, checking up on me, making sure I was okay. Um, some other people saying that this is bullshit. Um, that's pretty much it. I think, I don't know what would happen if I was actually in school. Oh, you're probably like them. Because I was going to say, I'm sure, like, yeah. even all the people that are younger or older, like, I'm sure lots of people would have lots to say. Or even if you're just, like, walking fast and they're, like, yelling out and random I, stuff. Um, I went to school downtown in, like, a food court. It was, like, the second and third floor of that. And so, oh. like, also being around lots of people in the food court, I feel like people would recognize me or stuff like that. And I was already mm. having trouble with that school. So um, before I blew up, we are like, oh, we're switching schools. Um and then it all blew up. I was like, mm, that's kind of, cool. kind of a mm-hmm. blessing in disguise, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Have you had the chance to be recognized in public at all? Like, has that happened where you're walking around a food court or a mall? And Yeah. Um, I went with my best friend to the mall and we were walking around. We were actually outside of Build-A-Bear and these two teenage girls come up to me and was like, are you? And I was like, yeah. Uh, and they're like, <laughs> I'm like oh, photo and I didn't want to say no because I didn't want to be mean or fit into that character that I portrayed or whatever but I, really didn't want to, but I was like okay um so I took a photo um then it on TikTok like a couple weeks later but it only had like 100 likes or whatever so although I guess if people already think you're mean you, could, you may as well play into it be like actually no I'm not going to take a photo they already <laughs> think I mean I'll show them mean. <laughs> luckily it already happened um it only happened once so oh, yeah. good. right um, I was scared of going to public after I'm not gonna lie um yeah I didn't public for a while after so that's Although, fair enough I think it would be weird to be if I was you I'd be walking around feeling like is that person looking at me because they know the video like mm-hmm. yeah they think he, yeah just paranoid all the time yeah mm. so now the real questions <laughs> oh do you still want to be a marine biologist is that still the cards for your future sort of it's funny because i wanted to be a marine biologist since i was five um but now i'm leaning more towards zoologist and helping like all animals and all of that oh okay Sorry, that's you exciting i don't discriminate <laughs> against where they live land, yep. sky <laughs> Oh, ocean i take yeah. it all exactly. that's good to know i feel like everybody was just holding out that's <laughs> that was their main question another question we saw a bit was have you been to the bahamas yet did you get your trip uh, so many people ask me this it's insane um <laughs> no i haven't also covid <laughs> that's usually what i say i'm like just covid um <laughs> No, and then lots of people just joke. Um, I got an insane amount of things that said that I went to the Bahamas with Charlie D'Amelio because she went to the Bahamas. <laughs> yes. They were all saying that I went with her and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no. We just see in a couple of years you release these photos and you're just like lying on the beach at the Bahamas. <laughs> 
Charlie. Wait, I remember that because it was right at the same time and as your like Bahamas story was blowing up and then Charlie D'Amelio went to the Bahamas and everyone's like... I was like, oh, you went with her and like they were, they were joking, but then I saw it like a thousand times and I was like, are they not joking? <laughs> <laughs> I was well, just like with the internet. Let's, I just let's never just know. settle it right now. Did you go to the Bahamas with Charlie D'Amelio? I did not. Okay. Maybe in the <laughs> future. Like after COVID. Yeah. She obviously just like the email must have got lost in trans. Must have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that must be when you weren't checking your DMs. Do you actually stand on your leg 10 times a day? I don't know why I said that. No. <laughs> I have no idea why that came out of my mouth. I think I was trying to intimidate them. Yeah, I don't know I don't why it came out of my mouth. Such like an animal side of like intimidation too. Like it's not even like it's something that like uh, I don't know what what animal does that. Does a flamingo do that? Yeah. I'm not sure. Probably yeah. Not. <laughs> I don't oh, even know funny. why I said that. It just came out of my mouth, and then as soon as I said it, I regretted it. Um, they ran with it though. They decided to keep it in the cart. They did. <laughs> they did indeed. Um. No, but what they didn't show with that clip is that oh. we were all standing on one leg for six minutes. Really? Oh, wow. Six to ten minutes. We were all on our okay. We all were doing very good. And we were doing challenges like walking around the studio with one leg and switching legs and spinning around and jumping. Like, we were doing this for, like, six minutes. Oh, so my God. Minutes, like, I just lost, like, right away. But right. I stopped jumping and I lost my balance. Um, so they made so it. You could have done it. You could have done it for. I could have done it. Ten, yeah. That was a long time. <laughs> no, six. I don't think I could last like a minute or two minutes. Like honestly, I'd be like, guys, cut the cameras, cut the cameras. Um, and also what they didn't show is I fell and no one else saw me fall, and so I oh. said I fell, and everyone was like, oh, thank you for your honesty. We didn't see you, and everyone was saying stuff like that, but. They didn't keep that in the either. Actually, no, I remember seeing that. I was like, because you kind of are in the back and then you like kind of drive up and then you're like, no, I'm out. And I'm like, good on her for doing that. I was like, I'm out, I'm out. And then everyone was like, oh, thanks for being honest. We didn't see. Like, you probably could have taken a second chance. And I remember the back mm. of my mind, I was like, oh, darn it. But <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm being no. too nice, but it's okay because at least people think I'm the nice girl. Oop, <laughs> never mind. Oh. Instead, people took the fact that you'd said you turn your foot 10 times a day and were like, then why did you get out first? I don't know. <laughs> um, speaking of the cutting and altering, the crying scene, because we talked to Nina about yeah. this. Yeah. It had nothing to do with, like, well, like it had to do with the game, but it, like, the way they cut it made it seem like you were, like, crying because you, like, got out of the video. They did. Which, like, it. Yeah, which, like, Nina informed us that, like, it wasn't because of that. It was because of something else, which shocked yeah. me. Well, like, it should be expected, obviously, TV people uh, making drama. But I blame the how do you, how was that re- your reaction to that, yeah, especially? I blame the editing pretty much only for that because the rest of the things I said and everything, but this was just sneaky. When we were giving our reasons for why um, we wanted the $1,000, I said something really, really personal to me, and I was like, oh, mm. I'm just why did I say that so I asked them to cut it out and they told us that we can tell them and since we're under 18 they take it out right away and like all of that and so when I went to the couch when I was out I started crying because I realized I was saying all this personal stuff and it brought up a lot of emotion for me um Mm -hmm. and actually one part during it I had to walk out and NJ actually informed me that they they were just like keep going keep going like everyone just wanted to stop and make sure I was okay but they just told them when I stepped out because I was crying Oh my god, um, that's like not okay. That makes it ugh. like yeah, just so slimy TV people. I, I um, you know, said how I said something very personal to me that I didn't really want to share. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't realize I said it till after I said it. And he was like, oh, whoops. And so I went to the couch and I started crying about it. And um, they put that in. And when I saw the video and saw that they put that in, I was like, hi. Like, <laughs> I don't think I really, if I'm being honest, noticed at first when I first watched the video. And then when everyone started pointing it out, it was like, oh, they're smiling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah people really I remember, picked up the crying and ran with it. Yeah, I remember I watched the video, like, I think before it blew up. Because I just, like, watch cut videos. Yeah. they're entertaining. <laughs> um, 
And then I saw like all the edits of like what was happening like when it blew up and I was kind of like, I don't remember her crying. And then when we went and like watched it back, I was like, oh, oh. And um, it really like talking to Nina about it opened my eyes because I was like, of course they're going to, well, they shouldn't, but of course they edit things to make them look more dramatic or like entertaining. But especially when you're like underage and it's on something personal, it's like morals because there's this whole email and this whole speech about how oh if you want to take something out we'll take it out and like don't worry about it and like all of that but then they do that yeah right so and they haven't yeah. reached out from me since didn't you record it nothing nothing do <gasps> you no think idea. that like with the blow up of it all they'd be like checking in and being like that is so wrong so they didn't like check in at all no, no. mm-mm None of us got anything. We actually asked um, well, um, Heather and Nina emailed them and asked if we could do like I think it was Nina. I don't remember, but some of them emailed um, Cut to see if we could do a reunion episode. Yeah, yeah. They just never heard back. What? Um, it's because they know they're in the wrong. That's the thing. So they they did that on their own. I um, bailed out last second because of all you know the personal and hate was getting to me. Mm. So I bailed out last second on that, but. What are you going to do? That's so interesting because I was thinking the same thing. I thought, surely Cut, this is like their biggest, like this was everywhere. I was like, I'm surprised Cut isn't saying, let's get together, let's do a rerun of the video. But I thought as a nothing minimum. Nothing on their be- TikTok, nothing on their Instagram. Wow. Nothing. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I thought they'd be re- at a minimum being like, I just checking in. I know this has been hard for you. We're here for you. It's actually really awkward because I have an appointment every week right across the street from their office. From their oh, so it's that's very some awkward. like trauma stuff, though. That's like <laughs> I'm not even drinking. That's like post traumatic yeah. trauma, like going back and having to see it. And then, yeah, <laughs> literally going to help, get help, and then you like walk out. And you're like, okay, should I, should I just go back in? <laughs> and no, I know that's I saw, I saw someone in the window just watching me walk. Mm. so I mean it was weird I don't know I just thought it was kind of weird and kind of rude in no sense not to reach out to me and make sure I was okay or anyone else for that fact or even jump on the PR like I feel like that yeah so much and all of that but they just yeah, yeah. as I said I think it's because I like, know that like they did wrong because <laughs> if they would like we won't mention yeah. it at all yeah because yeah, if they mention it somebody would be like somebody would come out well now that you guys are talking about it and be like actually you edited this heaps and this was all wrong um, and then they'd have to deal with that yeah um i don't need to, like throw them under the bus or anything it's just my opinion it's what they did no yeah no are you or anything because it was mine as well so yeah and that's the thing i guess when it's a two-hour video and like how do we cut it make it make sense make it entertaining and then it's just unfortunate that obviously you copped the brunt of the editing down in that situation um are you actually a buddhist i was at the time right um i was just starting to practice and doing my things um i'm still trying to figure out where i'm at i still read the occasional like buddhist manuscript or like the temple's been closed obviously because of um covid but i still like read up on it in a little bit but um definitely not as much as that oh, cool mm. how did you get into that or what interested you in that my sixth grade um history teacher we were learning all about um different religions we watched a movie about buddhism and all of that and i said that is what i identify with and that like i understand that and i i'm also trying to decide you know if i'm christian or buddhist i don't know what the heck i am so i'm still trying to figure that out but yeah she definitely got me interested in that she's that's probably her only good quality but you know no and like as you said like you're still trying to figure it out and that's like I think the one of the best things about being young and like trying to find your religion or like what you believe in there's so many different ways you can go about it and blah blah so props to you I appreciate that with um the the video we, we did with Nina and I'm blaming Theo for this because <laughs> I didn't have any part of this but Theo promoted the thing as oh, calling you yes. fish girl how do you like what is your opinion because lots of people came to us well in especially the youtube video being like that is so mean da, 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 da. and we i didn't even think about it 
Well, I didn't do it. So, so I'm playing with I'll you. Just, I'll just quickly say before I do. So obviously, for some reason, people didn't really jump on your name much. There was a lot of nicknames going around. Um, some kind of hateful, but mostly they were like um, Ocean Fax Girl or Overalls Girl. Oh, or I thought it was Girl. Fish Girl. <laughs> So when I when posting stuff, I think I tried to use I said Jordan, aka Fish Girl, because Fish people girl, use yeah. that. And then a lot of people in the comments like were very annoyed at that. And and I think that's fair. So was that mm. how do you feel about being called Fish Girl? Is that yeah? It's just uncreative. Mm. <laughs> I feel like they could have come up with so much better. Like I like Fish and Girl. They're just like, uh, we'll put two and two together. Like uh. I honestly, like, first thought was like, they couldn't come up with anything better. Like, <laughs> they anything. Like it shows, the, it shows the mind um, <laughs> how big their mind is, really, if they're sending hate and calling you fish girl. That's was, like um, Aqua's man, Aquaman's girlfriend. Just for, like, <laughs> and also fish. Was it specifically fish? Like you talked about ocean. Yeah. Ocean More like octopus. Wasn't yeah. it like, yeah, like as if anything? I've well, I used to volunteer and work at the aquarium. And, oh, yeah. okay. And I always spent the most time with the octopus because we were buddies, um, which you know sounds weird, but we were. And so I was, yeah, I don't know where fish came from. Ocean <laughs> fish, I don't know. Uh, apparently, the only thing in the ocean is fish, so <laughs> yeah, obviously, <laughs> that's all they know. That's all they know. <laughs> but I will say that that did show that there were, there's a lot of people kind of that have your back because I, like a lot of people were kind of saying, um, please don't call her fish girl. She has a name. So a lot of people were I writing for you in that. I really see those, so I appreciate that, but I didn't see those. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. My parents did not name me fish girl. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pull out your birth certificate um, everywhere you go. <laughs> and I was not fish girl. <laughs> Just as a couple of kind of final questions, I guess. What is something that people would be surprised to know about Jordan? Well, that's my stuffed animal collection. Um, True. I'm a very artistic person. Oh. Um, very artsy. I do a lot of painting and drawing and all that stuff. Yeah, um, right. And I genuinely don't get mad. I mean, obviously, <laughs> that way, but like, <laughs> I am a very down to earth person and I have changed a lot since that video. I worked on myself and you know just found myself more and just all of that so and i i think i'm not as annoying not that's, at all <laughs> that's the thing about being a young person every year you're like an entirely different person so oh for sure like even like the phases we go through like of course there's like things that stay but like i went through like a nirvana stage that i don't even want to talk about like a whole grunge like fake grunge phase <laughs> I went through so many things that I'm like, it's somewhere to have footage of me, like in an interview from that like era, I'd be cancelled or hated on immensely. <laughs> so yeah, just like a year or two, like in your sense, like what it's three years now, like how different you are as a yeah, person. Crazy different um, than I was then. So I don't know. I think it's weird to judge someone off of 15 minutes of their life. Lots of people did it anyways. Um, especially like, you know, years ago. So And then you come and get asked questions about yourself back then. You're like, I don't even know who that person was back then. Like, I don't I even like the How can I analyze? <laughs> yeah. Kind of blacked out those years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah <fair enough>. Trauma <laughs> response. <laughs> so we've talked a lot about the worst parts of the experience. Obviously hate. But is there a silver lining? Is there any good parts? What has been the best part for you um, through this? Has it, has it been even like an understanding of yourself? Um, being there for myself more. Mm-hmm. Um, loving myself, you, you know, when no one else couldn't. Um, even with all that hate, just, you know, and realizing there are people who love me in my life and all of that. Because um, it's hard to notice that and realize that when you have anxiety and depression that there are people around you who care about you. And so that definitely came out. So I think those are the silver linings, really just mm-hmm. knowing I'm caring for myself um, and other people care about me. It's really crazy he you say that because some, like, people in their 60s, 70s, older, they still don't know how to care about themselves or love themselves or, like, so not that it's a blessing in disguise because I wouldn't put it on anyone but, like, the fact that it's allowed you to do that at such, like, a young age is so amazing kind of in a way. 
like the experience is it but you know the outcome of like that is so important because now like you face this and really you could face so I don't know like for other people they couldn't even like face this so you have one step ahead of most of the world yeah it was tough but I I wouldn't say it was the toughest thing I've been through in my life because you know I've been through Mm. a lot but it definitely made me realize hey I gotta be there for myself you when no one else is because who's Mm. gonna have your back better than you Mm. that's awesome are you at the point do you think where you can look on this and be like I'm kind of grateful it happened because I learned all this or he's no. (laughs) (laughs) No. That's going to take a little longer. (laughs) Talk to me in 30 years. Yeah, Yeah, it's going to take a little longer. What does, okay, we talked about your day-to-day life now. What does the future look like for Jordan? Moving forward, what what are you looking to do? What what does your life hopefully look like? My hope is to graduate from high school I'm gonna take a gap year um go down to Costa Rica and like Thailand and all of that and do internships and work with animals to get kind of that experience and then go back to college for my zoology degree Mm. Uh, because I'm a year younger than anyone else everyone else anyway so might as well um in my grade so might as well true you've got a year to exactly Mature, it's know. so interesting sorry to cut you off but it's so interesting because like I heard that like a well I was born in America but like a lot of my friends and stuff they don't like it's not even on their radar a lot to do a gap year whilst like in mm. Australia it's a usual practice like a lot of people take a year off and go travel and do whatever so yeah. and I think that's important so it's really cool to hear you say that and to use that to do internships it's a very like <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I'm like in America, like you don't do that. But yeah, everyone's like, clutch my pearls. Like in America, no one <laughs> thinks seriously of a gap year. My mom's very supportive with it, but I, there are some people in my life that are like, no, 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 no. You're gonna, never gonna go back to college. You're never gonna do this. You're gonna be unsuccessful unless you take a gap year. And I'm like, it's just a year. <laughs> I, I can't get a job unless I go to college, like the mm-hmm. job that I want. So I'm gonna yeah. go to college like yeah so. and especially when you've been studying for so long and then had this experience too on top of everything it's like let me have a break <laughs> can I just have a break to do yeah. something I love give me a year <laughs> <laughs> exactly no good on you for doing that though for taking that yeah. opposite that alternative route um and then hopefully find the love of my life I know that sounds cliche but find a girlfriend or someone to marry and then adopt or foster a couple kids um because oh. i love kids i currently nanny at the moment i'm just oh I'm nice just, I love kids so much so hopefully we have some kids of my own work at a zoo or um like a what's they called come on brain you can work today aquarium uh you wish no um <laughs> <laughs> reservations are like the small farms where they oh yeah them. they're like um rehabilitation like centers yeah. and stuff yeah yeah animals or like somewhere far away or you know and then when your kids are old nice. enough you can introduce them show them the video be like this was your mom at 14 <laughs> or do you just bury in the depths of hell me like that is never coming up <laughs> Uh, um like internet is bad (laughs) (laughs) no they'll find out at some point i'm sure but also Um, happy just just a very quick sign of happy pride month um i think you're publicly a part of that community so happy pride month yes appreciate that how's it going how's your pride month been so far it's been good i'm very lucky to have very accepting parents mm-hmm. and um, friends and my school's doing a pride day next week. Oh, awesome. we're all dressed very in nice rainbow. to hear. I love my school. And like, I'm very lucky to have a lot of wonderful people, but I do give my hearts to the people that don't. Um, mm. Yeah. And cause that, that's going to be rough hiding who you are. Um, exactly. Not being able to show who you are and what you want to be and all that. I just, I couldn't even imagine um, trying mm. to hide myself like that. Because obviously I'm very showy about it, shave my head, wear the rainbow shirts. Like I'm very <laughs> open about it. Um, but I don't know what I would do if I wasn't able to. So yeah, I give all my heart to the people that aren't. Yeah. Mm, super important. On my last question for you before we leave, 
is I'm going to give the platform to you. What would you like to say to everybody who's listening, who's listening for Fish Girl or who's listening to be in support of Jordan or anything? What would you like? This is your time to say what you, you would like. I like to say that I appreciate everyone who's been there for me. Um, and even the subtle ones who DM'd me never got anything back that just said, um, you you know, you're, the hate's going to be okay. Like, you're going to be okay. You're going to do something better. Um, not to judge people based on 15 minutes of their life or, you know, just a small bit of them. Like, just, again, don't judge a book by its cover. Like, you don't know what's going on in that person's life or you know what's cut out you don't know that person so Mm -hmm. just don't do that and don't be so quick to cancel people people are allowed to make mistakes like you've made I'm sure you've made plenty of mistakes you're just lucky they're not on the internet forever (laughs) exactly Um, very true (laughs) and I appreciate all the people who have been on this journey with me and who have said that I am neurodivergent and because that made me realize and I look it up and how my doctor would tell me I am neurodivergent so knowing wow. that part of me also I appreciate the internet you know and I, you know I didn't even know I was neurodivergent but I am so. yeah right yeah I appreciate everyone who has made me realize that part of myself and that it's not my fault this brain's mm. fault um <laughs> damn you brain this guy's this guy's <laughs> fault yeah I'm just they don't, don't judge no one deserves that amount of hate. You don't know what that could do to a person. You don't know what's going on in their life. You don't know any of it. So just don't judge. Awesome. Well, I think that was a very good last words. So yeah. thanks, John. Exactly. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for coming on and sharing yeah, about this whole experience, having to relive it about six months after the height of it. Um, mm-hmm. Sorry for putting through, you through that again. No, you're <laughs> good. I think people should get to hear, you know, my say about it, my final last words. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So important. And I'm so excited because even when we put out the stuff with Nina and had a bit of a taste and I, just the reaction of people being like, wait, they edit stuff? Like even yeah. the crying scene, everything people mm-hmm. were. Um, so shocked. Reaction. So I think people will be really keen to hear from you another time. So thank you again. This has been awesome. You're awesome. Guys, she mm. isn't awful. She isn't. <laughs> it's actually been so oh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. I try my best. Yeah. So no. thank you so much, Jordan. I guess oh, you don't want to send anyone to your Instagram. <laughs> Stay away. Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing. <laughs> Not just keep her name out of your mouth. No social medias. We actually just like had connections through friends and that's how we got to talk to her. <laughs> no social media at all. Thank you so much, Jordan. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, of course. That was Jordan. I... No, I obviously, if you're watching the video, we're like back and forth. (laughs) We're back. (laughs) It's just us doing that. Jordan's gone. We finished the interview. Yeah, we finished the interview, but this is a couple of days later. Um, Just calling us out here. But... (laughs) Explain the trade secrets. I rem- <laughs> after that episode, we were talking, like after interviewing, interviewing more of a conversation really mm. with Jordan. She is so lovely, guys. I and I don't. I hope it came across in the video because, like, that was the main part which we talked to her. But she was so lovely and Truly. like so mature, like so mature. One hundred percent. No, we stand. We mm. yes. No, she was awesome for sure. She was so lovely. Um, I made me feel really sad actually throughout that video just to think about how much it impacted her and just like how scary that would have been. Like, I don't know how you guys were if you are 14, if you're thinking back to when you were 14, but I could not have handled that. I was already (laughs) going through some shit of my own. I was already... You know, most of us are struggling with like one person disliking us at school, mm-hmm. for example. Um, yeah, I thought it was interesting to hear that like she hadn't actually experienced any of the positiveness. Like for her, it had just mm-hmm. been purely a very dark experience. And because like as we had seen it develop on the internet, as I said, people had started to latch on to her and to treat her more positively, especially when the initial like hate of just the general community died down. Mm-hmm. Um, but she didn't even experience any of that. So. Yeah, well, she went off social media. Yeah. And that's, like, fair enough, like, because, like, as she said, people, like, were taking photos of her house. Like, that that is terrifying. And, yeah, just shows how 
influential the internet is. Yeah. I would have not not be able to have that level of self-control whatsoever. Mm. I mean, maybe once people start sending like pictures of your house, it goes, it becomes a little different, but yeah, very much props to her for that. Yeah. I would have, I like, even if it would have been impacting my mental health, I don't think I would have had the strength to go <laughs> on social media. Like, cause I'd be so just consumed by it. Like I yeah. already, like, you know, like I message you if we get a hate comment about me, like I clap back. <laughs> like we recently got a hate comment on like the Nina video being like, this girl's so annoying. Like she thinks she's so funny, <laughs> like cutting in and out. And I literally was like, girl, it's my ADHD. Like, and that's the part of our interview, like, <laughs> interview kind of way style we do it we like conversate and like when you're with friends you kind of cut in when you have something to say or like and i do get it i do get it people came there for the interview but i'm not gonna hold back like oh. I, so maybe it was just because it was one person though compared to like the whole internet um yes. but yeah props to her amazing and like to just hear that she's doing well now and it's really good really good to hear yeah, so let us know. Thank you again to Jordan, by the way. Um, but let us know who would you like to hear us chat to next. Get yes. the insult. It is always just interesting because obviously with internet, you see the teeniest bit. So it's like to be able to sit down and have like almost an hour with someone actually mm. giving them a chance to hear stuff is so beneficial. Give, giving them their say their, and yes. giving, like showing off their personality yeah. without it being edited. Um, but no who do you want us to inv- unveil oh. what personalities do you <laughs> want to see from um because we could try we could get them on but i hope you guys have enjoyed the interview mm. the episode the special episode interview um with jordan and yes. yes thank you so much for tuning in let us know what you thought in the comments if you're watching on youtube or as a review you could <laughs> leave a cheeky <laughs> little our rating DMs. or slide to our dms As- of course Per usual, yes, leave a rating and review. You can follow us on the Undecided Gen Z. We're not going to promote Jordan's Instagram because she's had enough. (laughs) And I understand. (laughs) Uh, But yes, the Undecided Gen Z, Theo.McCoy, Ali underscore Malcolm. We have a Facebook group. Oh. That if you want to join a part of that. Um, But I really enjoy this interview. I always enjoy interviews. Um, We always have lovely people on. Haven't been disappointed so far <laughs> no crossing my fingers I know, I'm waiting I'm like, yeah so we're gonna have Who's a dad where we have to like person? awkwardly do this after bit and be like well <laughs> yeah. oh, they were great <laughs> anyway no. subs- guys make sure you also subscribe on whatever the platform you're listening to so you can be the first to hear if we ever do have an awkward dad interview uh hopefully not subscribe That's the episode we'll be back with regular programming new episodes I'm just like, what more can we promote at this point? (laughs) We're just like, ah! No, but we do hope you guys enjoyed. (laughs)